I'm here in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress. I'm joined by Mikhail Trabia from Orange. Mikhail, nice to meet you. Hello, nice and, to meet you. Uh, lots going on at this show, but I just wanted to dig into a, a few kind of high-level issues with you. First on Open RAN, which is obviously an ongoing topic. Where, where do things stand at the moment? There have been a few words of caution from some of the vendors about brownfield operators moving a bit too slowly, maybe. What's your perspective and how do you see this technology kind of fitting into Orange's plans over the next few years? Actually, we're quite confident on open run progress and maturity. And it's good to mention and to recall that this is part of an overall bigger transformation on network, which is the, the cloud transformation that we bring to the telco industry. Open run is part of it. Uh, and it starts to be ready. Maturity is increasing. We are confident that it is in line with our expectation. We have mentioned that we would uh, uh, target to have from 2025 all new rollout uh, on RAN that is open RAN compliant. We are still uh, with this target and we will uh, start as of 2023 to roll out open RAN in commercial networks in partnership with Vodafone in Romania. Okay. And um, the Romania project, is that a, a brownfield um, site where you're doing that? So it will for a while run, I, I it guess. It is a brownfield. The, yeah. It is a brownfield. And it demonstrates also that uh, Open RAN has some advantages, specifically in a RAN sharing uh, situation, because then it allows uh, each telco to be much more independent uh, thanks to Open RAN. And this is also uh, in rural areas that we don't have to start with the first complexity of massive MIMO, for instance. Okay. So that's the good uh, areas to start with. But we are confident uh, uh, to have the ambition in 2025 to extend this to all the, uh, the run, uh, including massive MIMO, because we see the improvement and we see the maturity growing from all the players. Uh, we see the energy uh, efficiency topic being addressed. We see the security concern also that needs mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that are being addressed. So we are still confident and I think this is perfectly in line with our expectation. Okay, and you, you mentioned the cloud there, the sort of broader transformation towards the cloud and public cloud's a big part of that. Microsoft and AWS in particular, very visible at the show. It's a very high level question, but in terms of the public cloud economics, which is a big debate in the industry, does that make sense for telco workloads at the moment? So uh, obviously we use public cloud like uh, any company for mm -hmm. our own data, for instance, for uh, to leverage data and AI use cases. Then for telco workload, uh, it's a question of the telco cloud. What is the cloud that we are going to use to virtualize uh, our networks? I think there are several solutions and our ambition is to be multi-cloud. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, we certainly don't close the door to hyperscalers, uh, especially on some use cases. For instance, uh, for private mobile network, we can certainly have a, a hyperscaler based uh, cloud for some of the customers that uh, may have their own uh, workload running on those cloud and they may have an interest to do so. Um, so we believe we, we should not be dependent. We believe we should have uh, alternative solution and that's what we try to, to build collectively with the Silva project is to have a, a telco solution. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, and we work with all of the main uh, telcos and also with the, the vendors because we need to have the Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei uh, network function to work on this cloud. But certainly, uh, we uh, may also, for certain uh, situations, use the hyperscaler. Okay, and you mentioned private clouds. So it's actually sort of running in a in a facility that someone else owns, but using a hyperscaler platform. Exactly. For example. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe the the last big one. It's a few years away, but there's already talk about six G. Um, do you have any strong thoughts about that? About what six G might <laughs> be? Uh, will it be another big equipment swap like we've had with five G? You know, how, how do you, how do you see that one playing out? Well, the, the first strong thought is that uh, today it is about 5G. Yep. And it's really important because we invest a lot on 5G. There is still a, a lot uh, of things to go. Uh, 5G is going to continue to improve. We are starting with 5G SA now. Uh, uh, so we, we are rolling out the, the core network. Uh, this will also, uh, we will need to have also IT transformation to 
have the full agility, the full benefit to be able to do, for instance, dynamic slicing. Uh, we will start with static slicing, so this, this will be an important move because static, static slicing means that you, you need several months to uh, develop a slice. With dynamic, you can do it on the go for a certain customer at a certain moment in time, so this will be needed. And then 6G will come, obviously. We know that uh, every time we, we roll out a, a new generation, we start to prepare the, the next one. We believe that uh, it should focus on what really matters, uh, meaning uh, not necessarily more bandwidth, not necessarily more speed, uh, but more resilience, uh, meaning security, uh, meaning uh, also the, uh, uh, the ability to have an end-to-end efficiency at, at greenhouse gas emission, not only energy efficiency of the network, but also making sure, for instance, that they last longer, that the equipment, the devices that will go on the, the network uh, can last longer also because of the use of the battery. So this is the, this kind of topic that we expect from 6G. Okay, and yeah. energy a big topic at the event yeah. generally. I'm, I'm sure we'll hear more about it next year as well. But uh, yeah, Mikhail, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.